Carey. Welcome to my allotment, 152, here in the south coast of England. And we're about the beginning of July. It's July 4th today. And I'm just going to go through a plot tour. It's been a while. Um, it's very windy. I might have to do a voiceover. Um, everything's kind of growing and it's getting really, really huge. But we've also kind of come into the tipping point where everything's just kind of crossed over to that wild point. Um, it's growing really, really well, but it's no longer neat and tidy. It's just going where it wants to go. So let me show you around. And this is my plot, 152. So what's been happening? We'll start over here. So the artichokes had cropped all through end of May and June, but now they are finished. I'm just letting those last ones flower as that helps to strengthen the plant. It's looking a bit worse for wear after repeated wind storms and so much rain that we've had over the last few weeks. The calendula is blooming out in front. It's starting to get kind of to the point where I need to deadhead a bit more, but we'll get there. This is a dahlia and it's finally starting to come into flower. That's the first one that's coming there, a nice pink dahlia. And I have three of those here in the front. That one's a little look really little. I'm not sure why it's so small. And then this one looks like a yellow one coming. So it's coming along. Right in front of that, there's some oregano, which is starting to flower. I have two different kinds there. The normal green one and then a variegated leaf right behind it. I think they taste the same. Um, some thyme right behind there that's going into flower. Some didiscus flowers, which have never successfully grown, but they're almost there, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing what they look like, as the packet of seeds does not have a picture, but we're almost there. Yeah. Behind that we have the gladioli, which is forming flower spikes. It'll be soon. Echinacea which self-seeds every year, bless its heart, which is my favorite kind of flower. They are putting on a fine display. We have some lupin behind here, those lovely star-shaped leaves. Um, that one in the middle there is starting to have a flower spike, but that's also the one being nibbled, so I'm not really sure. I've cut my comfrey back and it's already regrown that much. That's about a week's worth of growth, which is amazing. And I have a honeysuckle here, which is starting to climb the trellis. It's doing really well. I'll expect something from it by next year. Behind that is my asparagus bed, which is brand new this year. Just planted it. I have four rows, five crowns each row. A mixture of a green variety and a purple variety, but honestly, I'm kind of regretting planting it. I, I thought about it for years before I finally made the plunge, but I didn't really know that asparagus beetle was this much of a problem. So I've come to the point where after going through every day and picking off the beetles and the slugs, I just, I can't do it anymore. I'm, I'm bored of the job. So it is covered in these little larva it will focus in maybe it won't it won't but it's all these little larva and they're really gross and they are shredding the plants I don't know if they'll make it but they're so high maintenance and that's just not how I garden um, I'm not one to go through and and work through and manage pests in that way and as I grow organically I do not want to spray even though we're not going to be eating them this year it's not something that I want in my land so it is what it is if it makes it great if it doesn't I give up we'll see what happens we have our eating apple our dessert apple tree it's doing amazing Thank the good Lord. This is such a good apple. Usually by the end of July we're starting to eat those and they're really, really tasty. Right next to it is our Bramley apple tree, which is more of a cooking apple. And they're doing really good this year. They're coming along nicely. Starting to form some nice big fruits. 
I pruned it really hard last winter, but obviously not hard enough because it is getting really tall. This next section's had a lot of changes in the last couple, well, about a week. Um, what I had in this bed was a whole bunch of peas, three different varieties, sugar snap pea called Delicate, um, Manj Tu or a snow pea called Shiraz, which is a purple variety, and two different kind of main crop peas. One was Onward and one was Hearst Green Shaft. And they all did really well, but the main crop peas are finished, so I pulled those out, and in its place I put in leeks. Um, in preparation for the other peas ending, I've also planted some cucumbers, so let me show you what that looks like. So here are the leeks. This is a Dutch variety called Blaugroen or something like that. I'll have to ask my my friend Ellen. She's Dutch. <laughs> How to pronounce? I think it means blue green. I mean, which is amazing. And then here are the peas, which are covered in that because they're just being nibbled by birds. But that's fine. They are almost finished. The nets work well. Um, we're just letting, letting the last few crops come through of these purple varieties. The sweet, the sugar snap pea didn't do that wonderfully, but the Shiraz was quite the provider. It's grown some lovely peas. And at the base of it, at its feet, I've put in 10 cucumber plants, and this is Market Moor variety. Um, they are June sowing. I have some other cucumbers in the back, but I found that usually by mid-August they're starting to get powdery mildew and they're pretty much done. And we are cucumber lovers, so I started doing a second sowing so that we have a late, in, late crop. Yeah, so that we can have a later cropping variety that comes through to provide for the family. So what will happen, it's probably in about a week, I'll pull these suckers out, these purple peas mostly and I will keep the trellis up and actually train the cucumber up on that netting so that's the plan and they're growing they've put on quite a bit of growth they got some lovely new leaves since I put them in last week in front of those I have more calendula these are just kind of annuals that sow themselves there's some ball ridge in there I never actually planted any of these seeds. They were from my predecessors. Is that how you say that word? But they were here already, and they just keep coming back. I'm actually trying to tame them a bit because they're a bit too giving. I put some thyme in behind there, and it's flowering, and some variegated sage, which is beautiful. And I had moved my dahlias, which are finally coming up and producing some flowers. They make a lovely cut flower. This was a, just a, a multi-pack from Poundland. So it was only a pound and I got all these flowers. I was hopeful that something would happen and they've been putting on shows for five years so they're doing great. My rose bush, I have to look into. After a few good flowers, it just kind of decided to stop budding. It's growing. Maybe the dahlia is too close to it, but the dahlia hadn't showed up by the time I planted it, and I wasn't quite sure where that was going to be. We'll see how it goes. Here's my lupin, which is flowering. It's small in the first year, but it'll get bigger and bigger as it comes along each year. But it's looking really beautiful. I have some lilies that are just on the edge of flowering. About four different bulbs of lilies that are coming right here in front of the apples, they're actually super tall. They're taller than me. They're about five five, five foot five. So they've surpassed me. And at the base, here in front of my cabbages, are some anthrit. Anthr I can't say it. They look like snapdragons to me. But really pretty multi-pack of colors. This lovely pink color. And this is my favorite. It looks like fire. And they're starting to come. 
Let's take a look into the cabbage bed. I've harvested two of these guys now. There we go. It is a little bit weedy, but we're just going to let it be because the cabbage is going to hold their own. There's one over there that's starting to hard up. I think that is a greyhound or a Wheeler's Imperial. It's one of the pointy-headed cabbages. And they're getting a little bit slug nibbled, so I've put down some organic slug pellets, which is what those blue dots are. They don't work as good as the other pellets, but kinder to the wildlife. So that is another kind of cabbage. I forget which one. And we have some red cabbage here. And some cauliflower, which we'll see what happens. I just kind of threw stuff in. But I'm loving the netting for that this year. This is, has worked better than other systems I've tried before. And it's really easy to get in and out of, which has always been a problem for my netting systems. So here's my little herb bed. I have some sage, which has grown back nicely after I pruned it hard. Um, some lavender, which is just about ready to harvest. Lemon balm, which I totally regret planting. Rosemary, more oregano because apparently you can't have too much. Some more lavender here in the back that are newly planted this year. My cosmos, not a herb, but beautiful flower. Really enjoying these, having these cut flowers at home. More of these snapdragon type flowers. which I grew from seed the, that the boys bought for me for my birthday. They just pick stuff out. And some mint. The onions are kind of starting to worry me a bit. They were growing really well. They're actually growing really well, but they've kind of developed some kind of mold. If I think back, I think this has happened once before, but I'm just kind of watching and see what my neighbors do as they have more experience than me. And their onions have that as well, and they've left them in. So I'm just kind of leaving it, seeing what happens. When they pull theirs, I'll pull mine. So I'm hopeful that they'll keep growing. But let me show you what I mean. This is just something that's kind of showed up this week, unfortunately, because we've had so much wet weather. After all that drought and lovely sunshine for so long, when everything was looking so beautiful, everything's really looking quite bedraggled now. It's a shame. So here is that moldy kind of look to it. It's kind of affecting all the stems and they're kind of cutting open for some reason. I'm not sure what that is. I do think it's happened before, but I can't remember what I did. I'll have to consult my book, but usually around this time of year, my journal gets a little bit slim in what I've written because I get so busy weeding and harvesting that the writing goes down. But the onions themselves are looking beautiful. They are getting to a nice big size. These were grown from seed starting in February. Two different varieties in this bed. Um, one's a mammoth onion and one is a golden bear. So I'm very excited. It's my first time growing from seed and it's worked really well. In front of those, and around those actually, all the way around, are those Lilia spring onions that I just planted. And they're a purple or red variety. And they're a spring onion, but they can also start to bulb up. So, which is why I bought that seed. And they kind of go all the way around. And are the smaller ones that are starting to perk up in size. I also have some spring onions, which unfortunately, this is the, um, the Ishikari variety, which I love. It's a really good bunching onion, spring onion variety. Really grows well here in this soil. But it's starting to get that mold as well, which is a total bummer. And I don't want to pick these early because that's just not the point of spring onions. 
don't know if maybe spraying a milk solution on it would work. What do you guys think? I could happily take advice for this. Next to it in this bed, um, I pulled out some Swiss chard because, to be honest, I don't love it. And there was a lot of it. So I left three plants, so I have three different colors. And the rest I pulled out and I put in some more radish seeds. And in front and behind of the perpetual spinach, I have these Cape gooseberry plants, which are growing well, but they're kind of being covered by the perpetual spinach, which is again something I planted and it's growing really well, but actually haven't even eaten any of it yet because it's not my favorite. I much prefer a real spinach, kale, that kind of lettuce, that kind of thing. So these things that are in the beet family, I don't bother eating. I don't think I'll grow them next year. They're nice in the winter. That's when they really shine. When other things are really not looking well, they stay looking really good. Bugs don't really touch them very much. Um, they're a good option in the winter, but in the summer, I much prefer eating other things. In front of the winter brassica netting, I put some more parsley. My second sowing of parsley. And I'm trying to grow some lettuces down here. It's a bit of a poor germination. I'm not sure if they got nibbled. But I could probably put some more seed in. Only one made it over there. But these guys are doing really, really well. Let's peek in to my jungle. So these are purple sprouting broccoli and flower sprouts. So you can't actually see anything but the top of the leaves, but they're about up to my chest now, which is quite tall. So about four foot tall, almost, and doing lovely, looking really healthy. On the other side here is my other sowing of parsley, some turnips, which only look okay. <laughs> Not really bulbing yet. Oh, a little bit there. Yeah, they're coming. And another sowing of peas, which are starting to produce peas. So those are our main crop variety, the Hirsch green shaft. So we'll have those sometime soon. I also have another sowing of the Shiraz peas here and didn't bother netting because it was just kind of an afterthought. I threw them in, just something to climb this trellis. And actually the birds haven't found them yet. So hopefully they won't because it's so nice to look at the plants without having them all mold. And they're just covered in purple peas. We've now reached one of my favorite points of the year in the three sisters bed, the point where I stop weeding because honestly, why bother? <laughs> the plants are so big, it's totally a jungle in there. So there are weeds growing in the bottom, but they're not really competing with these huge plants. So I just get to let it be. So welcome to my jungle. I'm growing six different varieties of squash. Um, two that I had saved from seed, so an acorn squash, which it will be over here. Yeah. A Turk's turban. starting to grow. I have a Mosquit de Provence, which is this heirloom French variety with their variegated leaves. It will show as a really deeply ribbed orange pumpkin. I have Anna Schwartz 
Hubbard squash. I don't know if I have any of those showing yet. It's doing well. It's growing well. I'm not sure. And a few other ones. I have the Gaiu de Seine, which is the warty hot pink one. And one more. What is that other one? I can't remember. One more. In there somewhere. And they're just all doing so well. Covered in flowers, covered in vines. Just going everywhere. I think I have about 10 plants in there. I haven't really viewed everything and what's growing. I'm just letting it be for now. This is my popcorn, glass gem popcorn. Getting nice and tall. It's much higher than knee high by the 4th of July. Um, it's actually up to chest level and starting to tassel. And then I have my sweet corn in two sections. This one here and here. And they're also starting to um, produce pollen and tassels. So it won't be too long till we'll have corn. My dwarf peas are in front, but honestly, they're getting buried. It's fun to come in and try to find beans. There are in there. This side's doing better. The other side is covered in black fly, but they're the plants that actually kind of survived the frost, living through that frost, and they were weakened by that, so they are really pest riddled. Where this side I had to completely replant, and it is doing much happier. It is much happier because of it. I have my spinach plants, which I'm not harvesting from, but I am just holding off to save the seed once they are produced. So you see all these little furry bits, those are little flowers, and they'll just start to produce seeds soon. I actually think they're quite pretty. Oh, that bug. And I'm doing the same with my lettuce. It's Marvel of Four Seasons. It is huge, is what happens to a lettuce when it goes to seed. It's massive and tall, and it is starting to produce flowers. And it won't be too long till we can harvest those seeds. On the trellis, we have the sweet peas, which I've been cutting to take home. They smell so nice. They've almost, almost reached the top of the trellis. They're really coming along. This next bed, um, the right behind this compost heap, I used to have a big sunflower, but it was just knocked down in the wind today. So that's gone, but in its place, I do have a random volunteer tomato. No idea what it is, but for right now, it's just living there. The coriander or cilantro has gone to seed, but it's a really beautiful flower. It looks great in the cut flower arrangement, kind of like an easier version of baby's breath. So I've just been keeping that to enjoy looking at. The cucumbers are doing really well. They're vining along, starting to grow their trellis. And I finally have two full rows of them here. I've harvested one and there's loads of fruit set, but nothing really um, coming yet to eat. So there's a little one there. And on the gherkin ones, they are covered with lots of different fruit that are just growing. They're just taking their time and that's all right. Covered in flowers. So I have about three different varieties I think here. I just kept kept trying, kept planting, kept planting because they didn't do so well at the beginning, but persistence is key. Behind that, I put some more cilantro in along here that's just planted. That's what's coming up there and another planting over there, which I'm harvesting at the moment. I like to have a good succession of cilantro. It's the first year I've been successful at that. Let's go over here. In this one, I have the sweet potato bed, which they are vining. They are weedy too, but I'm only picking the big ones now. I'm starting to vine and fill out really nicely. I have the aubergine or the eggplants and they're putting on a little bit of growth 
And the basil, outside basil. I've never really successfully done that before, but it is doing really well there, as it is two layers of container to keep it warm. Here in the pepper bed, they're doing really well. I have some fruit that are setting, and these that my neighbor gave me. I don't remember the variety. I think some kind of or orange sweet pepper. And I have some Hungarian wax peppers over here, and some Marconi red, which I'm not sure where they are. I think over there in the corner, the smaller ones. So they're doing well. They're coming along. I haven't weeded in here yet. Cucumber and I have all along the sides. It's starting to set fruit, but they're not big enough to eat. But they are finally really climbing and starting to get away with themselves, which is what I like. Because that is the promise of fruit to come. So they're all along the edges there, except that outside corner. Happy days! And then we come to the zooks. Every year, plant way too many. And every year, I end up having so much to give away. And usually I just take them to work, so no big deal. Well, this year, because I'm not working that much, because of coronavirus, it's been very hard to get rid of them. And my kids, not a huge fan of them. They like small doses, not large meals that are centered around them. Which is a shame, because they grow so well and so prolifically, especially these black beauty ones. Should I pick that one? Why not? Otherwise they get so big. They grow so much in a day. Definitely should have brought my bigger basket. Oh. They just grow and grow and grow. So giving. My favorite one, this is a multi-pack. And I grew it because I like a little bit of yellow ones and a little bit of green ones. And I didn't want to buy lots of seeds. But actually, none of the yellow ones came. I have three different varieties though. The Black Beauty, which are definitely the most prolific. This light green one, which is probably my favorite one, tasting wise. And the speckled one, which is the first one I picked. I don't know any of their names other than the Black Beauty because that one's just so well known. Giving them a twist. They come off nicely. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more plant to go. Nine. Oh my god. Is that it? Nine. Nine's plenty. I think nine's enough. Yep, so nine fruit off of just five plants. It's intense. Behind there, I had all this dill, but to be honest, pests are a big problem this year. The black fly, the aphids, and the green fly have really been decimating things that they don't usually go for, so I haven't been checking them as much as they should be. I expected it of the beans. You know, I expected of the sweet peas and the peas, but dill, I've never seen them on dill before. Usually that's one of those things you plant to deter them because of the strong smell. But here they are. So most of that has gone because it was too much black um, green fly, so I pulled that out. I've planted some new dill in its place and through the weeds you can see that coming up. But what's left has just kind of been eaten to within an inch of its life so it's it's flowering it's probably not much longer for this world but it's very pretty still and then we have this huge sunflower my first one to flower and actually it's covered in black fly and I've never seen that before it's riddled with it which kind of makes me want to pull it out because it's right next to my tomatoes cast in shade which I don't want 
and I don't really need a sunflower here even though you're beautiful you are beautiful um, yeah so I'm just kind of letting the first flower come and then I'll probably chop that down to make more light gotta do some deadheading so I have my three tomato varieties um, the Roma which were sowed a bit later than the others and they're growing well they do need to be tied up and pruned because they're looking a bit bushy this is my multiflora variety idli so you can see they put off loads of flowers just loads of like, up to 80 fruit per truss which is amazing we'll see how that's doing it doesn't act like a normal vining plant I'm not sure whether it's a bush variety it didn't say on the packet but I haven't been pruning it in the same way because it doesn't act in the same way so I'm just letting it bush out of it I have three of those plants and then most of what I grow are the blight resistant crimson crush because I like a sure thing and they taste amazing they're a nice big slicer and they have a wonderful flavor and they are starting to set fruit. They also need a prune. There's a, there's a nice truss down there. So it'll probably be another month, probably before they're really ripening, but it is literally covered in fruit there all along and doing wonderfully. Nicola potatoes. That's a nice haul from just one plant. I'll put those in the basket. Even the little baby ones, because if you leave them in the ground, they grow. It's a funny looking one. You could put eye on it, it could be a person. Hello. Don't need the dirt. Good. So the Nicola potatoes, we have about four plants left, which will get us through the rest of July into August. And then, so one plant a week. And then we have all of these main crop variety, which are getting very close. These are the Markies, and they're doing really well. No blight yet, fingers crossed. It's doing well. We've got the sunflowers in the back there. They're allowed to stay. But first, let's look at these. This was where we had all the broccoli, but all the main heads have been harvested. And now we're just getting some side shoots every now and then. Oh, there's one. Let me pick that. Let's go into the net. One there. And more growing but we'll leave those to get bigger these are the Iron Man they still taste really lovely the side shoots there's lots coming and they just keep coming all season once the potatoes out I'll put a few more plants in which are what was the idea with those but I think because it's been so long I'm gonna resow, and so they'll be ready to go in nice fresh plants that'll go right along there 
behind, well, next to this is the Romanesco cauliflower, but no sign of heads yet. That'll be later in the season. And we have some kale behind there, which I need to harvest. Oh, a little bit of didiscus growing there. Let's get in. This. I can't actually see very well when I'm harvesting this stuff because it's behind the netting, so I just have to guess. The strawberries are done. We got a few stragglers, but they don't taste quite as sweet as they did. But what is coming in are these beans, which are flowering and just starting to set baby beans. We have a purple vi variety, Violet de Cossa, and Blue Lake, which is a green bean. And they are growing well, almost reaching the top, well, a couple have reached the top of the trellis, and they are starting to come along nicely. Behind those, we have loads of berries. Logan berries and Tay berries. What a giving bush this is. Each just one crown and they are just covered. They actually don't taste as good as raspberries or blackberries which is just one of those shames but they make a decent jam and they're good at smoothies which is what we use them for. We just freeze them and keep them going. So I need to harvest those. Some lovely flowers just growing. Spencer section which is looking really good. He has some baby beans down here. Looking nice and healthy. And he has a cucumber plant, which is doing really well. The gherkin cucumber. And his peas are starting to set. So he's doing really well. They've reached beyond the top of the netting, so we had to just open it up. The willow's gone crazy. Can't even get it in frame. But it'll be good for basket making, which I'm hoping to take a course on this year. I've started talking with an artist about it. There's this amazing Dorset artist I found named Kim Cresswell, and she does this beautiful work. I'll link her, um, her website in the description below, but it's just amazing work. And I've just been in correspondence with her about taking a willow weaving course once lockdown eases just that bit more and she starts setting workshops. But I'm very much looking forward to it. And I need it because the willow is just mad this year. There's just so much, more than there's ever been. And they're really tall, probably about seven foot tall. So lots to work with. The pears are loaded and doing well. I managed to score a bench. It was somebody was getting rid of it, but it's nice. I mean, it's ugly. We're going to paint it, but um, it's great to sit in. It doesn't have much of a view, mainly. I'll just show you. You just look at the berries, but it's somewhere to sit and just enjoy the garden in a different way. Soon it'll be surrounded by flowers. Once these dahlias get a bit bigger, they're growing here some lettuce growing which is just a nice border for it and some radishes which are setting their seed they're kind of going though so I've heard it's really nice eating radish pods so I'm going to try that with these ones behind I have the sword lilies growing and the peony which hasn't put on much growth but I think it's it's shit heyday will be next year so it's alive and it's doing well I'm happy with it The 
beets are doing lovely and we're starting to harvest those. I love my beets. Three different varieties in here. We have a red beet, which I think is the Detroit variety. So don't quote me on that. It might be bolt hardy. And we have a golden beetroot somewhere along and the kagogi which is the candy stripe variety and they're a bit smaller at the moment let me see if i can find oh there's a the other one a golden one nice having all of them on the plate. So these wash out when you cook them. They're nice sliced very thinly in a salad. They still taste good when they're roasted but they lose their candy striping and actually they will lose their candy striping if they get too large if you leave them in the ground too big. So they're best harvested a bit smaller. One more golden one, which are over here behind the willow forest. There's one. Good. I have the parsnips, but honestly, don't even look at those until later in the season. They're doing fine, they're very tall. The tallest ones are the ones from the save seed. And I'm very happy about that. Well, we've sowed our third lot of carrots and it's still so patchy. Well, there's a few in there. I wish I knew how to do it better. I put in seed pellets this time, which have a couple of seeds and a little bit of a clay ball, so it's a bit easier to do. And it's definitely been wet enough because it's been raining every day. Fingers crossed. I haven't seen much action yet but I am ever hopeful because we do love carrots Ooh. oh that's a nice one we do love them it's just I can't ever seem to get them to grow which is such a shame because Spencer would happily eat a carrot always oh that's a bit nothing Well, I'm going to leave what's there. There's not that many. I have two. It'll be a snack. The raspberries are doing really well. They're getting taller. They're about waist height now. Most of them. There's some stragglers. But again, this bed is getting really patchy. So I'll probably replace it next year. I have a whole plan for this whole section because it's so covered in bindweed and I try so hard to keep on top of it because mainly because it annoys my neighbors. I don't mind it too much, <laughs> but I have to keep the peace. But um, especially as I'm an organic grower and these guys over here are not, they just don't understand why I just can't spray it and then it's gone and then they don't have to have it on their plot. I get it, they don't want to have it on their plot, they, they're they keen gardeners, but I don't want to have to spray, I don't like the sprays, I don't want chemicals in my land, so it is what it is, so I'm trying to find a better solution to take care of it, so I'm going to invest in some woven weed fabric next year, I'm going to dig over, take these raspberries out, get some new canes, dig over all this, get as much bindweed as I can, and put the woven reed fabric down from the blueberries over here all the way back to the blackberries. Black currants are really starting to come on. Don't mind the bindweed. It's horrible. But it is oof, everywhere. So we have some black currants coming. They're almost ready to start picking. They're on the edges. I think a couple more days. And the red currants another week. 
they're looking pretty red but they get really jewel colored if you leave them go just a bit longer and the longer you leave them the better so my bottles are ready to make cordial and I make a red currant ja jelly as opposed to cranberry sauce to have at Thanksgiving because why not we're growing it might as well use it the rhubarb is on the other side. I'm pretty much done harvesting that. I'm going to let that plant rest now. And the blackberries are coming along. They're doing well. i got to stop picking those. Yeah, getting really big. This filled the trellis nicely. this in the bag for bindweed as bindweed does not go in the compost as it just keeps spreading back here the flowers are well they need a bit of deadheading but they're doing really nicely and in the greenhouse things are happening man I need to stop I keep putting more and more plants in here so first off, we have the melons, and I think only two varieties are harvest are f fruiting. I haven't seen any. Well, maybe it's hard to tell. It's such a big mess of leaves in there. We have a couple that are coming, and I think those are the P Petit de Rene. And this one may be a different one. I think that one is the other one, the Prescott von Blanc. And I put that in a net so it's a bit more supported. And then over here we have the sugar belly bee watermelons, which haven't really grown much. They are there, but they haven't bulked up any. I don't know. I put some more cucumbers in here. Those are more market more. I have a problem. I can't stop buying plant, putting plants in here. The field of basil. That's probably too much. I might give a couple plants away. I found these big aubergines. These eggplants. A pinstripe variety at Asda. And they're really good plants. They're huge. So I bought two of them. They're only three pounds each. So they're in there. I have two more kind of Marconi red which is a long pointy red um, sweet pepper. Two of those and the chili peppers. So most of these are Tabasco, but this one's an Anaheim that my neighbor gave to me and it is fruiting already. The Tabasco aren't quite yet, but they are starting to flower. And yeah, I think that's about it. That's loads of things. It's a bit of a jungle. I'll step back so you can get the full experience. So, it's not that big. That's my available floor space to pivot in. And around it is just a sea of greenery. So there you have it. That's our July 4th um, garden tour. It's doing really well. There's some pests. Some things are not doing as great as others, but that's about normal. We're eating really well and we have loads of stuff coming in and starting to preserve everything. So I'm very happy with how things are growing now. Thank you so much for walking along with me today and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.